Let's stick with the psychedelics theme and let's bring on Doug Drysdale, the CEO of Cybin. There he is. Doug, how, how is your Thursday going? Doing great, Spencer. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Guys, let's go ahead and get Doug's slides up. There they are. Uh, and Doug, tell us all about Cybin, what you work. Well, I mean, I know, I know what you're working on. I can tell by the name, but <laughs> tell us about the company. I will do. Thank you, Spencer. And, and thanks to everybody that is, uh, is listening for your interest in, in Cybin. Um, you know, what we're doing at Cybin is working to, to revolutionize how mental health conditions are treated. And that means potentially moving away from uh, chronic at-home treatment of conditions like depression uh, or addiction towards potentially intermittent, uh, intermittent uh, treatment with prescription psychedelic therapeutics under supervision in a clinical setting. Uh, with the with the potential to provide remission uh, from depressive symptoms or addictive cravings uh, for perhaps weeks or months at a time <clears throat> from just one or two doses. Now, clearly, if we're able to do that, if we're able to um, make it through the regulators and bring approved treatments to market, then uh, we would really be providing <clears throat> healthcare providers with uh, with very powerful new tools to tackle the mental health crisis. And we're starting from a really strong foundation. So some terrific studies out of Johns Hopkins and NYU uh, demonstrating uh, proof of concept and efficacy, uh, impressive efficacy using psilocybin and, and other psychedelics in conditions like depression and addiction. Uh, we're also, uh, from a drug development point of view, fortunate to know a lot about these molecules, these classical uh, psychedelic drugs, whether it's LSD, psilocybin, MDMA, DMT, um, many of them have been discovered for decades. So we know a lot about their chemistry, uh, about their metabolism, and also about their toxic toxicology profile, their toxicity. However, we still have a lot of work to do uh, at Cybin to turn these classical psychedelic drugs and take all that knowledge and transform these molecules into useful, scalable, scalable <clears throat> and approvable uh, prescription pharmaceuticals. Uh, many of these molecules have challenges that we're working to overcome, whether it's bioavailability uh, or duration of action. And some of these treatments are very long acting. Uh, MDMA, maybe 10 hours. Uh, an LSD session might be eight hours. You know, so an oral psilocybin session could be uh, six hours. And that clearly creates challenges for mental health infrastructure for clinics in terms of delivery of care. And so we're looking to reduce those, those timelines. As well as with psilocybin, uh, looking to overcome the challenges of it being a pro drug. Now, psilocybin is not the active ingredient. <clears throat> Excuse me, it is converted to psilocin, uh, and psil and that conversion through the liver. Um, and we know this from from development of many drugs over the last several decades. That liver metabolism can be highly variable between patients, and so you might have in the clinical sessions with the same dose one patient on oral psilocybin that has a very moderate uh, psychedelic effect and another that has a very powerful psychedelic effect with, with the same dosing. So these are challenges we're working to overcome to make sure that these uh, treatments at the end of the day uh, are, are approvable. Now at Cybin, we're working on four active drug programs uh, targeting depression, uh, addiction uh, in the form of alcohol use disorder, uh, anxiety disorders, and other treatment resistant uh, psychiatric disorders. Uh, our first program, CYB1, is a sublingual film formulation of psilocybin uh, targeting major depressive disorder. Uh, and I'll go into why we selected a sublingual film and the rationale for that and the benefits uh, that we think it can bring. And that, uh, that product has been approved, uh, has received IRB approval to begin a phase two study. And I expect that we will see PK data, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's data showing us what that onset of action, what the duration of action is uh, around the end of this year. Uh, we've also been working with um, other molecules that we've created from our, our library, um, other tryptamines, and tryptamines are molecules like psilocybin, LSD, DMT, they're all tryptamines. We've been taking short-acting tryptamines and applying due duration. I'll get into what that is uh, in a little while. Uh, but that due duration is enabling us to uh, selectively modify uh, the duration of action uh, of, of these molecules. And we've seen great proof of concept in our preclinical studies 
around those molecules. We're now to about 60 uh, preclinical studies that we've, that we've run in the last, last 12 months. The Simon team is growing. Uh, we're at about 50 or so people right now. Uh, so we're really uh, expanding to build a strong hub. Um, but we're working through many, many partnerships uh, around the world, uh, close to 50 partnerships in across North America and, and Europe, <clears throat> helping us to build our, our network of um, partners that can help us synthesize molecules, um, run preclinical studies in small and large animal species, uh, and then expand our, our, our capabilities into, into human studies. Uh, some notable partnerships that we have are with Catalan in the UK, where we're, moder where we're taking their uh, already disintegrating tablet technology, their Zytus technology, applying that to CYB3, targeting alcohol use disorder. Another partnership with Covance, where we're undergoing many, many preclinical studies there with their phenomenal team also in the UK. And lastly, uh, a partnership with Greenbrook, <clears throat> Greenbrook TMS, who have 149 mental health centers around the United States where they uh, are experts in the delivery of care for depression and, and see tens of thousands of patients on an annual basis. And I'll get into some of the advantages uh, of that partnership a little later in the presentation. Clearly all of this work <coughs> is generating, excuse me, <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, clearly, all of this work is generating lots of IP. Uh, we're up to about 16 patent filings so far, and I see that continuing to expand, covering novel molecules, um, methods of use in psychiatric disorders, uh, and also <clears throat> drug delivery technologies. Um, to manage all these programs, we need to be well capitalized. Uh, the company's raised $120 million to date. Uh, we're certainly very well capitalized for the next uh, two years plus. Uh, and we recently listed on New York Stock Exchange, the NYSE American in early August, which has given us an expanded uh, base of uh, expanded access to investors uh, going forward for continued funding. <clears throat> the team is incredibly strong. Uh, we, the team comes from a wide range of pharmaceutical companies across the spectrum and has managed collectively more than 60 IMD programs with the FDA. So lots of experience developing uh, drugs through the regulators, including a development of S-ketamine for Janssen. So the only team really that has uh, in this space that has developed a, a commercialized psychedelic drug, as well as many other uh, pharmaceutical products over the years. And here's a, a quick snapshot of, of some of the team members. Uh, but as I mentioned, we're now up to about uh, 50 or so people today across North America and, and Europe. Now, clearly, there's a massive <clears throat> global uh, unmet need here. I, I read recently that the total addressable market for all of the indications that the psychedelic sector are pursuing is something in the region of $300 billion annually. Uh, and when you consider that the total combined market cap of public psychedelic companies today is only around $10 billion combined, then there's clearly uh, an enormous opportunity in terms of value creation over the next uh, several years. Specifically looking at the indications that Cybin uh, is targeting, uh, these affect around 700 million people globally. Uh, 300 million people around the world suffer from depression. Uh, alcohol use disorder is the third largest preventable cause of death annually, killing 3 million people a year. Opioid use disorder <clears throat> is also an indication that we may pursue uh, in the future, and opioids have taken more lives than the HIV AIDS epidemic. And anxiety disorders are um, by far the most prevalent uh, mental health uh, disorder, with uh, prevalence up almost 12% of the population. So uh, and, and there's clearly an enormous need for these kinds of treatments. <clears throat> As we take a look at our pipeline, uh, I'll start from the bottom up. Uh, CYB5 uh, is, a pro is a discovery program. Uh, we've been here looking at phenethylamines. These are molecules that are MDMA-like, <coughs> excuse me, or, met or uh, mescaline-like. And here we've been screening and creating uh, novel molecules uh, that have a shorter duration of action and made some interesting discoveries that I think make these treatments uh, more efficient in their delivery. And I expect that we will select both a, a lead candidate from this program and an indication uh, sometime in, in 2022. 
We'll then look at the next two molecules we have in our pipeline, CYB3 and CYB4. These are both deuterated tryptamines, and I'll get into what deuteration uh, does in a little while. We're combining these, these novel molecules with different delivery, drug delivery technologies, uh, Zydus ODT technology, this orally disintegrating tablet technology from Catland. Here we're targeting alcohol use disorder, and we're making tremendous progress uh, with, uh, with, this pro with this program, with this particular molecule. And I expect that we'll be in a position uh, to move towards human studies very quickly um, with potentially an IND filing <clears throat> around the first quarter of 2022. CYB4 is about one quarter behind that. Uh, here we're combining this, this molecule that uh, does not have any oral bioavailability with an inhalation platform designed to deliver very rapid delivery into the bloodstream, very rapid onset of action for anxiety disorders. Again, moving very quickly through preclinical studies, large animal toxicology, and should be in humans uh, by the midpoint of 2022, midpoint of next year. <clears throat> Our CYB1 program is a sublingual film formulation of psilocybin. And here we're targeting major depressive disorder. And we've received approval, uh, IRB approval, to begin a phase two study. And I expect that we'll see uh, PK data uh, for this molecule around the end of, of 2021. Now, let me talk a little bit why we selected a sublingual film formulation. Uh, psilocybin is a prodrug. And <clears throat> when given orally, travels down through the GI tract and uh, gets metabolized by the liver. Um, incidentally, about 50 to 60 percent of the drug is metabolized away and this and never makes it to the site of action. Uh, that journey down through the GI tract and through the liver means that patients are waiting an hour or an hour and a quarter uh, to get to peak effect. Um, so they're sitting in the clinic waiting uh, for the, the medication to kick in. Um, and then this conversion of psilocybin to, to psilocin creates a reservoir effect where you're seeing a continuous ongoing conversion from, from pro-drug to active drug over time, which makes oral psilocybin very long acting, uh, which is why you're getting this uh, six hours or so. Also the reliance upon the liver to convert psilocybin to psilocin uh, means there's enormous variability between patients, which, which may create challenges with dosing. Uh, it may create challenges with, with regulators. We, we, will, we will see. So the, the, so the concept behind the sublingual film uh, which is designed to be placed underneath the tongue uh, in contact with the sublingual membranes. Uh, the ob object there is to deliver active drug rapidly into the bloodstream, rapidly to the site of action. Uh, and because we're bypassing the liver <clears throat> and bypassing that first pass metabolism, the hope is that uh, we'll be able to dose far less active drug. And so <clears throat> we expect uh, that active drug to be metabolized away uh, through, through the body after having an effect far quicker than with oral uh, psilocybin. And also not having that uh, reservoir effect, that liver conversion effect should also help with uh, shortening the duration of action. So as I said, we should have <clears throat> PK data uh, for our sublingual film uh, around the end of 2021. Uh, very exciting. And we selected major depressive disorder based upon uh, this particular study, uh, among others. This is a study by Alan Davis and Johns Hopkins and uh, was published in November of 2020, uh, looking at patients with MDD. And uh, what, what, the, what the investigators saw here was a response rate of 71%. So that means that 71% of patients had a clinically significant reduction in their depressive symptoms at week four after just two doses uh, of psilocybin. And as the author says here, this is around four times greater, this effect size, uh, than you might see with traditional therapies like SSRIs. So clearly, if we're able to replicate uh, these kinds of results in larger, well-controlled, uh, randomized studies, uh, then these really are powerful tools uh, to, that we can give to healthcare providers uh, to help with this mental health crisis. Moving on to our deuterated program, uh, we're really taking three approaches to optimizing those molecules. Uh, the first is uh, medicinal chemistry, and the second is drug delivery technologies, and the third is utilizing other technologies 
to help with delivery of care or drug development like digital platforms and, <clears throat> and neuroimaging. With our um, this medicinal chemistry, what we're doing with deuteration is selectively substituting hydrogen atoms on these tryptamine molecules with deuterium, which is heavy hydrogen. And this substitution uh, leads to the, these molecules resisting enzymatic breakdown in the body. So they're really resisting breakdown by monoamine oxidase. And by selectively substituting these, these hydrogen atoms with deuterium, we can modify uh, the duration and optimize it to fit in with a regular treatment paradigm. The goal here is not, for, not to have treatments where um, clinics are required to keep a patient in a, in a room for a whole day, which clearly would be economically challenging for them, but to provide treatments that fit within a regular therapy treatment paradigm. So maybe that's 45 minutes to two hours, something in that, in that time slot. And through this different selective uh, substitutions, we're able to optimize that duration. We're then combining these molecules with, uh, with drug delivery technologies, whether it's ODT or inhalation, uh, in order to optimize the delivery uh, into the body and into the side of action, and then uh, working with other, other technologies. What we've seen so far uh, in our preclinical work is really clear validation of the business model, of this development model. And so with our deuterated tryptamines, we've shown that we are clearly able to modify the duration uh, without impacting 5-HT receptor binding. And I would say that as being analogous potentially to, to efficacy and without impacting toxicity. So uh, checking those three boxes is a really important step in, in preclinical development. And we expect to continue to remove these molecules uh, through those, those models uh, and into man, uh, as I mentioned, in the first half of, of 2022. So very, very exciting. I just wanna wrap up by talking about uh, two uh, important partnerships, uh, two of the 50 partnerships that we, we've uh, created today. Uh, the first is with a company called Kernel, uh, who are based on the West Coast. And the Kernel team has done a phenomenal job in miniaturizing uh, neuroimaging technology. In this case, it's functional near-infrared spectroscopy. And what that miniaturization has, has done is enabled them to create a wearable, a wearable helmet where real-time brain activity can be recorded uh, using this, this device. Uh, we're sponsoring a study uh, with, Kern, with the Kernel team, a feasibility study using ketamine, uh, where we expect to measure that real-time brain activity um, with, pay, uh, with healthy volunteers uh, while they're undergoing a you know, psychedelic uh, experience. And we're hopeful uh, that this data, this information will help us create more targeted uh, psych uh, psychedelic treatments uh, in the future. We expect data from this study uh, before the end of, of 2021. And lastly, a partnership with Greenbrook. Uh, Greenbrook now operates, as it says, 129, but are operating 149 mental health clinics uh, around the United States and are clearly experts in delivery of care with, uh, with, um, with depressive patients. Yeah, as we have built our network <clears throat> of partners across North America and across uh, Europe, it's clear to us that the level, uh, the number of experienced investigators, experienced uh, therapists and experienced clinical sites uh, is lacking. Um, clearly not that many sites around the world that uh, they have psychedelic experience. So our plan here, our goal with uh, this partnership is to provide Cybin with access to clinical infrastructure that can enable us to supplement the, the existing infrastructure that's out there today. Um, certainly before the end of this year, we'll, we'll identify uh, at least uh, one or two centers of excellence where we can combine Cybin's um, knowledge of psychedelics uh, and our Embark psychotherapy program uh, with Greenbrook's uh, expertise uh, on the ground uh, to create centers where we can train therapists, uh, train uh, investigators and potentially access uh, the uh, patient population as we look to scale up clinical studies over the next uh, several years. So to summarize, uh, clearly the Simon uh, management team is very experienced, have a strong track record in delivering uh, FDA uh, approvals. And we have a strong and expanding uh, IP portfolio. Uh, we've seen positive preclinical uh, results now across more than 60 preclinical studies over the last year. 
Uh, we're excited to see PK data uh, from our sub sublingual film formulation by the end of 2021. We have a deep pipeline of uh, additional molecules that we expect will continue to generate uh, new opportunities. And we look forward to near-term human studies, CYB3 and CYB4 uh, in the first quarter, second quarter of uh, 2022, respectively.